Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about appreciation and gratitude and how they pave the way to more peace and calm. And this is going along with the symptoms of inner peace. I think I left off. I think the last one I did was number seven. So this one is symptom of inner peace number eight, which reads frequent, overwhelming episodes of appreciation. Just because our stress levels are high and we feel like we are at the end of our rope, we can still muster our gratitude and appreciation. It may not be your first inclination yet (laughs) to go for gratitude and appreciation, but with practice, like most things, you will find yourself going into appreciation more and more often naturally. Having more feelings of gratitude and appreciation in your life is a good sign. It's a sign here of inner peace. Actually, it's an excellent sign that you are on your way back to true peace and calm. If this is the first time you've heard me talk about the symptoms of inner peace, these were exceptionally helpful to me when I was struggling with my anxiety. I had a cutout uh, from a magazine. It was back in the day when we used to buy a lot of magazines before we had the internet. And I think it was from East West Journal, which then became, I believe, New Age Journal, perhaps, but it was way back in the day. And there was a full page, and it was called The Symptoms of Inner Peace. And I had this hanging in my shop in Skinny Atlas, New York. And I would read these over and over and over. They, uh, they, They came into my site daily. So they began to really stick with me. And this number eight that we're talking about today, the frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation is a symptom of inner peace. And what I loved about it so much was that we always are paying so much attention to what the symptoms of dis-ease are, right? Of, of problems, dis-ease. But we very rarely pay attention to the symptoms of a good life, the symptoms of inner peace. So before I go forward, I guess I'll read all of them. It's relatively short. And then I have many episodes where I have talked about many of these individually. So the first one, just to give you guys a reminder, the more you hear these, the more they're going to sink in with you. The true symptoms of inner peace, this is when you know you're on track. And maybe you get one of these, maybe you got two of them, but eventually you're going to say, oh, I've got more and more. And it's just exciting because we're not looking at symptoms of a problem, but symptoms of the going in the direction we want to go. The first one is a tendency to think and act deliberately rather than from fears based on past experiences. Number two, an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment. Three, a loss of interest in judging others. Four, a loss of interest in judging self. Five, a loss of interest in conflict. Six, a loss of interest in interpreting the actions of others. Seven, a loss of ability to worry. Eight, frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation. Nine, Contented feelings of connectedness with others and nature. 10. Frequent attacks of smiling through the heart. 
11. Increasing susceptibility to kindnesses offered and the uncontrollable urge to reciprocate. And 12. An increasing tendency to allow things to unfold rather than resisting and manipulating. Again, those are the 12 symptoms of inner peace. And I still have this page (laughs) from back in the day. And it says the author is unknown, but still very much appreciated. So yeah, I've been carrying this around for a million years, haven't I? It was that important to me to see those symptoms of a place I wanted to be, not somewhere I was trying to get away from. I wanted to see where can I go toward. And even to this day, I'm still working on on these. I, I Believe me, I am not perfect. And there are things that I, when I read these, I go, I can really, I could really work on that. Let me see what I can change, what attitude or frame of mind can I change to find myself going more toward that symptom. These are really important. Again, it's about our attitude. It's about our desire to go toward something versus always running away from something, running away from pain, running away from fear, distracting from it. What about moving toward something? And today we could be moving toward frequent, overwhelming episodes of appreciation. And yesterday was Thanksgiving Day here in the United States when I am recording this. And it was our day of of Thanksgiving, of gratitude, where people pay attention to that. And actually, it's something we need to pay attention to on a daily basis, which we can do with practice, with our gratitude journals, with just an inner sense of gratitude. But you do come to a place where you can feel overwhelmed with appreciation. It's a beautiful feeling. And it's something we don't much talk about, right? If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. I know when I first read these symptoms of inner peace, I was sure not experiencing frequent overwhelming episodes of anything but fear. And so I am with you. I have been in your shoes. So let me remind you that I had no magic potion. What I did have was a practice of things that would calm my nervous system, allowing me to have more awareness of where my mind was going and then steering it or cultivating it in a better direction. And if I could do this, I know that you can do this too, seriously. So before we go on, let's have some appreciation for today's sponsor, who I very much appreciate. BetterHelp is with us today. When there are things that you can't tell anyone or you feel like you can't unload to your family or friends and you need to unload it, that's where therapy can be helpful. And BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't really have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's so much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and the Anxiety Coaches Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com ACP. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash A-C-P. And we also have Open with us. Open is a mindfulness studio designing a new way to practice well-being. Open blends music, sound, breath, movement, and visuals to bring you into the present moment. You can practice with open live or on demand with their library of meditation, breathwork, yoga, and Pilates classes. 
Open offers breathwork classes that will immediately help reduce stress and anxiety in the body. When you breathe deeply, you are sending a message to your brain to calm down and relax, and repeating in a controlled manner and a daily ritual, you will see incredible results. If you're like so many listeners of the show, when you need stress reduction or relief, you're not always able to access the breathing technique or practice on your own. And this is where I think open can really help. There are three recommended breath tracks you can check into with open for stress and anxiety, and they are moon breath with Mel Ma, symmetry with Crisson, and breath to balance with Allie M. You can try open for 30 days using my promotion code COACHES. Go to open.com coaches. That's go.o-p-e-n.com and use code COACHES when you sign up. That link will be in the show notes for your convenience. I hope you will check it out there. Thank you, open. So back to some appreciation and gratitude, and it really does pave the way to more peace and calm. This symptom, I remember reading this, and again, like I just said earlier, the only thing I was having overwhelming episodes of of was fear. And, And so, but this has to be exciting for you to hear, because I turned that around. I was able to do that. And you are able to do it too. Actually, you're the only one that can do it for you. I can't do it for you. Your doctor can't do it for you. Medication can't do it for you. Therapists can't do it for you. But you can do it for you. And you can do it little bits at a time. Don't get overwhelmed about how long it's going to take. Just let it take as long as it takes. As long as you're heading in the direction of inner peace, right? What could go wrong? So I do have some questions that I'd like you to start pondering and to be able to ask yourself. Let these questions bring you back to the awareness of now, this moment. Even right now, let's just do that. Where are you? Be there, fully be there. Feel your feet on the floor or in your shoes. Feel the breath come in your body and expand your rib cage. Those are your ribs. They're here with you right now. This breath can only be had right now. And also notice how you are thinking, how you are feeling. And try to put your mind in the direction of appreciation, of gratitude, which is a pure healing salve for the worried soul. Believe me, appreciation. So let's be appreciative for those lungs that are filling up our chest so much that we can feel our ribcage move, that we can see our belly expand. For the lips that are able to crack a smile right now, for doing these silly things with me that seem pointless until you do them over and over and realize this is the only place you can be is right here, right now. So you might as well find something to appreciate about it. It is a true salve for your worried soul, believe me. So let's look at some of these questions. These are things that you could either just, you could journal about them. A lot of people like journal prompts And so you could have these as one week of of journal prompts or a couple of days worth. You could take one of these questions and read it prior to going into your meditation time and just let it roll around with you as you are paying attention to your breath and coming back to the present moment or just something to ponder while you're out for a run or while you're swimming but somehow find some way to let these questions into your soul. The first one I have is, what from the minute to the magnificent do I have to be thankful for today? What's good about this question is 
that often when we are looking for gratitudes or something to be thankful for, we look for the magnificent. We look for the big, the obvious, the huge. But I want you to also search for the minute, just a color that caught your fancy. Maybe it was a texture that you ran into throughout the day that was just lovely. I want you to dive into those things, enjoy them fully, and then remember them to write them down in your journal. Why not? This is all we have. If we're waiting for the magnificent to carry us off into appreciation, we may be waiting a long time for some of us. There may not be big, huge, sweeping, magnificent things happening in our lives. And that's okay. Life is so awesome, even in the minute. Find the joy in there. I think you might be surprised. The second question I have is, how can I turn a negative, what if, into a positive, proactive, now-based solution? I know that all of you who are listening are very familiar with what ifs. We've all had them. And so how can we have a different attitude with the what if? Can we turn it around a little bit, look at it from another perspective and see if we can find a positive, proactive, now-based solution for that what if? Because the what if is in the future. Is there something right now that you can do? Then that should be done. Do it or write it down to do it, right? Take some proactive action in the now and then let it go. Do what you can with what you have right here, right now, and then let it go because you cannot work in the future. More will come that you need to do. It never stops. <laughs> it's a constant flow, but you can't miss all of the present moment now and all the things that you could do right now because you are so occupied with what if in the future. You have no power and no ability to act in the future. The third one I have is what do I have to look forward to that excites me or makes me feel whole and cared for? Again, this is using our now, our present moment, to decide what we want to go toward. So we're looking forward. Yes, that is in the future, but we're using our now to steer us. We got the hands on the steering wheel and we want to go toward that which excites me or that which makes me feel whole or cared for. Steer towards that. That's what you can do today. You can't take care of any big what ifs about it in the future, but today you can take care of your attitude to have you move more toward that which you desire. The fourth one I have is who inspires me and makes me desire to be more of my true authentic self? This brings in people that we care about or that have had an impact on our life. So, you know, let that run through your current thinking. Who inspires you and makes you desire to be more of your true authentic self? That's a great thing to think about, to bring a person to mind that inspires you. Again, what we're doing is using our now moments in a way that builds us, not tears us down, not makes us afraid, but fills us with appreciation and gratitude. And the fifth one I have here is how can I make my world right here, right now, a better place? And I love this one because it brings us into the current present moment. We're right here. And what can I do right now to make my now a better place? So often we put things off for the future and then we worry about them. It's kind of interesting. Is there something that you could do today, right now, after you 
finish up with this podcast, finish listening to this episode that you could do that could make your life a better place? It could be a simple thing. Again, don't look for the magnificent and the extraordinary. Bring it down to earth. Do something small. Those small things, they all add up. And they add up to a beautiful, well-lived life. So I hope that you will take an opportunity today to especially pay attention to this last question of, how can I make my world right here, right now, a better place? Something small, something that you can handle, something that will make you smile. I so appreciate being here with you. I have great gratitude and appreciation for all of you that listen and support the show. It's like awesome. It's it's so much of what I would have wanted back when I was struggling, but I could not even have imagined such a thing being available. And now here I am doing it for someone else. If one person benefits from what I go over here and rattle on about that has worked for me and my beautiful, wonderful group members and clients, then I believe that I have done a good job. I hope that you will keep listening and always feel free to send email to anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. Before I read today's quote, I was wondering if you prefer the show without ads, or perhaps you might like to have access to the entire back catalog of over 600 episodes. Maybe you'd like some bonus meditation episodes. All of that and more are available for five bucks a month with our premium Supercast membership. Go to anxietycoaches.supercast.com and join us ad-free today. The link will be in the show notes. And now for today's quote. The symptom of inner peace number eight. Frequent, overwhelming episodes of appreciation. The author is unknown, but still very much appreciated. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.